Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Bootstrap Workbench. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about the IC9700. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of you are here because of my IC7300 videos, and you've been wondering if I'm going to provide similar coverage for the IC9700. And the answer to that question is yes. Uh, with the recent release of some additional specification information for the 9700, I decided to go ahead and place one on pre-order and uh, I'm going to share that information with you now and uh, we'll talk about some of the uh, the positives and the negatives of this radio. So uh, over on uh, qrznow.com there's an article uh, talking about uh, the IC9700 and there are pictures of uh, some of the specification sheet brochure type information I've gone ahead and downloaded that, and uh, we can take a look at it now. So first of all, um, I know that some of us, including me, had hopes that uh, this radio would have the uh, 1.25 meter band, uh, also possibly the 33 centimeter band. It does not uh, at this time. It looks like this is going to be a uh, 2 meter, 70 centimeter, and uh, 23 centimeter radio. Uh, primarily intended for uh, satellite use, <clears throat> but it also does um, FM and um, single sideband, so it could be useful for uh, those of us who are interested in, uh, for instance, two meter single sideband. So this radio uh, produces 100 watts on two meter, 75 watts on 70 centimeter, and 10 watts on the uh, 23 centimeter band. Of course, those are power levels at uh, FM and um, ready and single sideband and continuous wave. Uh, the AM power output levels are lower. We'll get to that in just a couple of moments. Uh, this radio looks very similar to the IC7300 <clears throat> in that it has the uh, central 4.3 inch display. So uh, if you were to stack one of these on top of a uh, 7300, it would probably uh, be a pretty sweet looking configuration. Uh, as with most uh, ICOM radios, you get uh, 99 channels in satellite mode. If you're in regular mode, it's 107, but that includes uh, band edges and uh, a few other things. Uh, for satellite mode, you also have full duplex operation. Uh, in normal mode, you have dual watch. Uh, it looks like this radio probably has D-Star. Uh, we're not 100% sure on that yet, but uh, based on the fact that it's listed here on the first specification sheet, and then also, uh, if you look under options, there is no D-Star module. So that leads me to believe that uh, D-Star is probably uh, standard. Uh, this radio also has the uh, digital data mode uh, that provides up to 128 kilobits of data communications. Uh, and that is going to be a uh, quadrature modulation mode. So let's uh, zoom in here into the specifications. We can see that uh, this is not a general coverage receiver. It covers uh, specifically the 2 meter, 70 centimeter, and 23 centimeter bands. Uh, I've heard some comments online where people have said that uh, they're not interested if it doesn't have general coverage. Uh, I can understand that perspective, but uh, the other side of that is uh, there's also another perspective that. Um, I, I would hope that ICOM has put some fairly tight filtering in front of the SDR. Uh, there are some very strong signals uh, out there in the public safety bands that could cause issues. And so uh, I would rather have uh, a limited coverage receiver uh, if the, uh, the trade-off is that I have less front-end overload. So uh, antenna connection-wise, uh, on the 2-meter side, there is an SR239. Uh, that's pretty much standard for uh, almost all of your uh, two meter and dual bander radios out there. Now on the 70 centimeter side and the 23 centimeter uh, side, uh, those have end connectors. I know a lot of people are big fans of uh, end connectors, so it's nice to see that on a production radio, uh, at least in the amateur market. I've seen it on a lot of uh, commercial radios. Uh, power supply requirements, you're going to need your four, uh, normal 13.8-volt uh, power supply. Uh, their listed max is 18 amps. Of course, I would say, you know, you can always go higher. Uh, I use a 40-amp power supply in my ham shack, personally. 
and uh, I may have to add another power supply. Um, my 7300 is connected to the 40 amp. I may add another <clears throat> 30 or 40 amp power supply in the ham shack so that I have uh, plenty of uh, power, and uh, if need be, I could use both radios at the same time. Uh, frequency stability uh, is less than 0.5 ppm, so uh, it's already uh, pretty good out of the box. It's not like some of the other radios out there, uh, like the FT-857, uh, where you can buy an additional module to uh, go to high stability. Uh, like we discussed before, the output power levels uh, for all the modes except AM, 2 meters, 100 watts, 70 centimeters, 75 watts, 23 centimeters, 10 watts on AM. At 2 meter, you're looking at 25 watts. Uh, on 70 centimeter, you're looking at 18.75 watts. And on 23 centimeter, you're looking at 2.5 watts. That's pretty standard. Uh, every radio I've seen that does uh, AM, FM, uh, and single sideband, you're always going to have lower power output levels on AM uh, just because of the uh, power supply requirements for AM. So uh, I'll provide a link to this article so that you can take a look at the uh, spurious emission uh, details and the uh, sensitivity and selectivity details. I would like to uh, go over here and take a quick look at the rear panel. <clears throat> so as we already discussed, there's an SO239 for 2 meter and end connectors for 70 centimeter and uh, 1.2 gigahertz. Let me see if I've got that correct. Uh... Yes, so this connector close to the fan, the in connector close to the fan is for 70 centimeter, and the one uh, closest to the edge is for uh, 23 centimeter. It has the same 4-pin power connector that we've seen before uh, on the 7300. This is the one that um, some people have difficulty uh, pressing the tab to get it to release. Uh, an interesting thing that I see here is it has an, what looks to be an RJ45 port on the back. Uh, that leads me to believe that uh, this radio may possibly have the uh, RSBA1 server built into it. If so, uh, that's, uh, that's a pretty neat feature. The 7300 does not have that. Uh, I can see a USB port, which would uh, make sense for uh, connection to a PC uh, for uh, control activities and use with uh, other software. Uh, what looks like various uh, speaker jacks here. Uh, and then also there is... A port here. I'm not sure if that is uh, the 13-pin connector that they use on the back of uh, their HF radios or if that's something different, but uh, I would imagine it's definitely some sort of option connector. And, of course, you've got a ground there. So uh, that's a quick breakdown. That's what we know so far. Of course, these specifications uh, are possibly subject to change, uh, and we won't know uh, what this radio is actually capable of until... Uh, it's available for sale in uh, North America. We're still waiting on the, uh, the FCC to uh, grant type acceptance to this and uh, certify it so it can be sold. That's probably going to happen sometime in early 2019. If you'd like one of these radios, there are uh, various places on the Internet where you can uh, get on a pre-order list. Uh, most of them want around $50 or so uh, U.S. to get you started. And then uh, they'll call once they're available. And uh, the lines are uh, developing, so if you want it, uh, go ahead and get signed up. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, put them down below. I'd like to thank you for watching, and uh, I also hope that you have a great day.